Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. And I'm Martha Cashel, and here we are at Solid Rock Baptist Church in Madison Heights. And, and I have the last of our six lessons on the Kingdom Warfare Prayer. And this lesson is on common deceptions and scriptures for truth. You know, I prayed about what to teach today, and I really felt that the Lord wanted me to teach on deceptions, and I prayed several times about it. Every time that was pretty much all that he would say at that time was just he wanted the deceptions taught. And um, the more I got into it, the more it just consumed me, and I ended up with a lot of notes. Um, I do recommend that you look at them on the website. It's on our Wednesday night Facebook page. Um, and <laughs> if you have my email, I can send it to you if you don't like Facebook. Um, so basically, basically, this is a wonderful time to learn about deceptions and truth because we are absolutely deluged with deceptions right now. And deception is the primary method of the enemy for taking us off track and confusing people. So, okay, so here we go. So just to review our last week's lesson, our, how did the believer go from Adam's incredible defeat where he fell and Eve fell and all creation fell with them to Jesus's complete victory over the enemy. There's a pretty big difference, wouldn't you say? So I kind of broke it down into four basic steps to outline it, and we went over that last week. Jesus had complete victory over the enemy with the crucifixion. He lived a perfectly sinless life, and he paid the debt for our sins, and he obtained the keys from the enemy he went to hell and took the keys from the enemy, and I'm sure that the enemy didn't give it to him willingly. So he righteously took these keys. Now he made heaven and earth and everything in it as the word of God, and he had a right to everything that was made. <laughs> so he was right to do everything that he did. And also, Jesus had a victory parade to absolutely clear any misconceptions and show that Apparently, he had complete victory over the enemy. He led them in a parade, which was customary in those days. The Romans, when they conquered people, would lead them in a, def a parade showing their defeat. It was the same thing. So, and three, um, the believers, that is us, the ecclesia, we submit to Jesus with love as our head. That is part of our obtaining the victory. We must completely submit to Jesus Christ. If we don't submit to him, we don't have victory. So it's necessary. Okay. So Jesus gave us the keys to the kingdom of heaven, the Holy Spirit. He gave us the incredible gift of the Holy Spirit, our helper, our comforter. And he gave us heavenly power at Pentecost. So Jesus gave us the responsibility to spiritually reign on earth and abide in him in love. We're his body on earth, so literally we are representing him on earth. And I also went over daily tips for victory, just all kinds of nitty-gritty things. Now, I want to emphasize that to reading the word and or even listening to the word is absolutely essential. It will strengthen us. It will teach us the truth and help us to stay in truth, help us to speak the truth, help us to recognize the truth, and tell lies from truth. The Word of God does all these things supernaturally because Jesus brought truth and grace into the world, and, and Jesus is the truth. So he is the, tr the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes to the Father except by him. So audio Bibles and apps can help us get the word inside of us. We don't have to literally sit there and read every word to get the meaning inside of our hearts. If we hear it, we also can absorb the Bible. And so that protects us from deception. Studying twice a day is very scriptural. And it helped the mighty warrior Joshua. As it says in Joshua 1.8, he was told by God 
very clearly to meditate on the word of God <clears throat> twice a day. And I'm sure he did it because he was completely victorious and he did everything that God told him to do. So, well, I can think of one little mistake. Um, <laughs> he didn't pray and these people deceived him because he didn't pray, okay? We need to pray to avoid deception as well. It's very important. Okay, also in Psalm 1-2, it says to meditate on the word twi twice a day, not just once a day. So I, I do that. I do, I read the word and, and even meditate on it twice a day because I want to be strong and victorious and, and diligent, you know. So, all right, so number one on page one, we've got the unseen realm. So we fight and we stand in the realm of the spirit. Our struggles are primarily in the realm of the spirit. With the Father, we stand with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we are in the kingdom of God in Christ. So there's, there's the kingdom of God, which is the bigger thing, and then there's those of us who are in Christ. Those are human, okay? There's other beings in heaven besides human beings, right? But we're the part of the kingdom of God that is in Christ. And, and so, Jesus is our head, and he must be first, and he must have complete dominion in all things for the church, okay? Because he's the head. <laughs> he's not like the elbow or the arm. He's the most important part. He's the one that's in charge, okay? Every part of the body is important, but, um, Jesus conquered and put his kingdom over the enemy's kingdom. So when he gave us the keys to the kingdom, he had given us victory already. However, okay, so realize that the devil and all his underlings are underneath us because Jesus has won that, and we enforce Jesus' victory over the devil, over his demons and his hierarchy. So God's angels are here to help us and help Jesus. They want to help Jesus do what Jesus wants to do for God. They're eager to help. That's why they're here. They want to help the kingdom of God. They want to see God's purposes come to pass. Okay, so Jesus is assigned by God to rule over the world and specifically over America because he is our Lord. And there is no other for us. We cannot serve two masters. Matthew 6, 24. There is a demon called Baal that is assigned by the devil to reign over America. Or Baal, I guess some people say it. And so realize that Jesus has been given all power over the enemy and we share in that power, according to Luke 9, 1. God will punish Baal as he did in Exodus Exodus 14 at the Red Sea. And when he overcame the enemy at the Red Sea, that was the demon Baal. So that's the same one that we're dealing with here in America. So the scripture says, and I will punish Baal, and the King James is B-E-L, in Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he has swallowed up, and the nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. So Jesus has the preeminence and he is victorious over, over all of the enemy. <clears throat> so the enemy is legalistic and constantly accuses the church before God the Father and is the accuser of the brethren. And that's Revelation 12.10. The enemy works by agreement and tries to get us to believe in his lies instead of the word of God. Okay, there's deception, right? He's trying to get us to believe lies about us, about our purpose, about the world, anything. You know, he's just always trying to twist things. His main weapon, okay, we know that, is deception, but his goal is to steal, kill, and destroy. So watch out for the enemy doing these things. When you see killing, stealing, and destruction, realize that the enemy is likely involved. Okay, so, so we, we are the bride of Christ, that is, in Revelation, we get to marry Jesus, but we haven't really done that yet, we're engaged, okay, and in, 
in the Galilean and Hebrew law back then, um, accepting an offer to be married is a legal contract, okay? This is giving our word. So we're not officially married to Jesus yet. We're the bride of Christ to be, right? But we have entered into a covenant with God as the bride of Christ. We have given our word and we're betrothed to Jesus Christ. So that's, that's a covenant. It's a contract and we're expected to keep our end of the covenant, <laughs> okay? So, um, all right, we do the, uh, the best we can, right? Okay, so the enemy attacks our relationship with God. He wants to destroy that. It's very important to God. It's important to us, and the enemy's against that, okay? So he and the demons will try to get us to break our covenant with God spiritually. And if they can get us to glorify the enemy, put down God, or worship the enemy in the spirit, that's like committing adultery against God. So he wants to get us to do something that is equivalent to adultery in the spirit world. Okay, that would be worshiping another god. All right, we have to be very careful about that. Um, the enemy is always looking for evidence to use against us, and he wants to show that we've broken our covenant with God, and he'll argue about that with, with God. Okay, the enemy attacks the younger generation to destroy them and to stop the covenant from being passed from generation to generation. That's why he's so against our youth. Okay, he wants to cut off the flow of faith through the human race. And the youth are the most vulnerable. That's a vulnerable link. For those of us that have learned how to fight, how to stand on the word, we've learned about scripture, we know how God works, you know, we're not as vulnerable, but he's going to attack the youth. Okay? So Jesus is, of course, our defense lawyer. And to be able to defeat the enemy, we must be wise to his tactics, okay? And that's why I'm standing up here. I want to teach you today about the common deceptions that the enemy uses against the church of God, against us, okay? Very important. And you know, I got into this and I started asking the opinions of other people and, and you know, they would read through it and give me pointers and things. And, and I do want to mention that my incredible mentor, Charlotte, um, she gave me wisdom to tell you, and it's just my privilege to be able to tell you these things. She learned these things after she's been serving God steadfastly for 72 years and seen all kinds of wonders and miracles, salvation. She's seen people raised from the dead. She's seen, I, you know, all kinds of sicknesses and diseases healed miraculously and instantly. Um, she's just seen it all. Amazing. She's done so many things for the Lord. Um, so she knows these things, and she, <laughs> she helps me with this material. So, all right, so number two, the bottom of page one, who are we fighting? The enemy is inferior to us. If the enemy has inferior power and is very sneaky because really the only chance he's going to get to win over us he can't win in a fair fight because he's inferior, okay? He's inferior to Jesus Christ and, and his body. And so, and he knows that. And so he just tries to deceive us into giving him the victory that we already have, okay? So if we recognize and resist the enemy, we will win. So we want to recognize what the enemy is doing and resist. Like in James, it says to submit yourself to God and resist the devil, okay? If we can do that, we've got a really good handle on victory at that point, you know? So, all right. So then the enemy tries to keep us ineffective by fighting each other and ourselves and not him. Okay, if he can divert our, enemy, our energy into fighting each other, then he's laughing and he's doing well. And you can see how that would be, right? Like if... If a mother is angry at her son who's being used of the devil, the devil's trying to destroy the son, and she gets mad at the son, guess what? The devil's laughing, you know, and really her enemy is the devil, right? Or the, the demons that are operating in her son. So, so we need to fight the right enemy and fight in the spirit and not in the flesh. So on the bottom of page one, there's a description of that. 
Um, in Psalm 34, 14, it says, Beloved, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. 1 John 4, 11, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. You know, if the enemy is working in somebody, we can still love that person, okay? It's really recognized that it's the enemy and not the person. If the enemy were kicked out of that person, that person could be loved, right? And that person can still be loved. They're still a human being made in the image of God, even if the enemy is using them. So one of the seven things that God hates is he that soweth discord among the brethren, and a froward man soweth strife. So, soweth strife, okay. And a whisperer separateth the cheapest, cheapest of friends. So all this kind of strife causes a lot of problems in the body of Christ and families. And so speaking evil or negative things about others is the work of the devil, especially if it's done without love. But I mean, we need to speak the truth in love, you know, and for the right purposes. And it's just so easy to say something without praying about it, without being sure that it's done out of love and for it to build up. Um, so be very, very careful about that. It's probably best not to say anything if you can't say anything nice about another believer. Um, so the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And so the anger of men does not produce righteous things. We might feel like we're righteously angry, right? And it's okay to be angry. You know what? When, when say, you know, the president or people betray our own Americans who are stranded in another country, it's natural that we would feel some anger, okay? That's, that's just normal. I mean, I'm sure that we can't help that, but um, the scripture does say not to let the sun go down on our wrath um, because that's giving place to the devil. So, all right. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. <clears throat> Those who make peace are blessed. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Okay, so we need teamwork to win over the enemy, and we need to choose love and unity over pride. Okay. So when we get over these differences, you know, we probably are going to have to toss our pride. <laughs> okay, that's just the way it is. But it's a good thing. So sometimes we feel like we're fighting ourselves. But ourselves is the flesh, right? We call it the flesh, scripturally. And flesh and blood. But the scripture says we don't fight against flesh and blood. That's Ephesians 6, 12, which I just read. Okay, so we're actually fighting the enemy when we think we're fighting ourselves. So, you know, if somebody's trying to quit smoking, they feel like they're fighting themselves. They're addicted to it. They're craving it. They get really mean when they don't get a cigarette. Okay, <laughs> some of them do. And um, they might feel like they're fighting themselves, but it really it's the enemy. It's an illusion that they're, they're actually fighting themselves. Because that's what the word says. So... We must be dependent upon God and not rely on our own strength. We cannot defeat the enemy by our own strength. We have to lean on God. And we must take every thought captive. So every thought to fully submit to God, casting down imaginations. This is 2 Corinthians 10, 5. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So, you know, I can, I can do that to, I'm getting better and better at it, really. And um, I watch my own thoughts. I kind of stand back and watch it, you know. And, and I'll think, you know, okay, is this scriptural? <laughs> you know, am I loving or am I doing the best thing? So, um, so I can correct myself that way by taking my thoughts captive. All right. So... Here's an answer to this. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So 
So I present my whole body as a living sacrifice to God. And that way, I'm relying on God's strength and not my own. Okay? And it's really very simple. Jesus makes it easy for us. Um, and another, another deception is fear. I mean, you might think that fear is justified. Like, well, I don't know how I'm going to pay this and that. And, you know, that's scary, okay? And might say, using reason, that it's reasonable to be scared. But that's really a deception, because the word says hundreds of times not to be afraid. And so God means it. He doesn't want us to be afraid of anything, even if we have rational reasons, <laughs> okay? If there's a train coming, I'll step out of the way. But I don't have to be afraid when I do it. I might have kind of a jump in my step. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, God says not to be afraid. So I do my best to be bold and strong and not be afraid and fully trust in him no matter what's going on. Um, I'll tell you that there are people in Afghanistan that are really battling with fear right now, and we need to pray for them. There's people being tortured and beheaded, and likely even our own countrymen. So, you know, we need to pray for them really seriously. Um, actually, let's pray right now. I wanted to start this in prayer anyway. So, so, dear Lord God, I thank you, Lord, for this incredible opportunity, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. Thank you, Lord, that you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, we thank you. And Lord, we pray for our countrymen and those that belong to you in Afghanistan, Lord God. Lord, have mercy on them, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray lift them up and provide for their needs, comfort them, and deliver them from evil, Lord God. Give them courage. And Lord, I pray the blood of Jesus over them. Lord, I pray that they will have supernatural strength in, in the spirit, Lord, I pray that you will be glorified, Lord God. Lord, that you'll make a way out of every temptation, Lord. We thank you for that. Lord, I pray that they will have fellowship. And Lord, that you will provide routes for them to escape. And Lord, I pray that for the refugees who have escaped or are escaping, Lord God, that you'll make a way for them, Lord, and provide for their needs and protect them from evil. In Jesus' name, amen. So... All right, so now fear is usually from the enemy. So he says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And then there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment, and he that feareth is not made perfect in love. So... We can get rid of fear <clears throat> by loving and by commanding it to leave in love, okay? And filling the void with love instead. Incredible. So um, another deception is that, so we don't have to be pushed around by fear. That's a deception. We can stand against it. We don't have to take that from any stupid fear, spirit of fear, <laughs> okay? It has no dominion over us, all right? Does that make sense? Okay, so um, are we alone? Sometimes, you know, we might start feeling like we're alone, but we're never alone. We have Holy Spirit. We have angels. We're surrounded by a great number of witnesses in Hebrews 12, 1. Every word we speak is heard by God the Father. He always hears us. We are certainly not alone at all, and we're blessed with fellowship here. So we have fellowship with other Christians, which is a wonderful thing. So, so um, Jesus is willing to guide, comfort, and fellowship with us if we seek his presence. We can have fellowship with Jesus Christ anytime we really seek him. And so that's incredible and wonderful, and praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So we're never alone. And the Holy Spirit will fight the enemy right alongside us and be our muscle. Okay, he wants to win, and if we start resisting the enemy, he'll do the rest. You know, well, all we have to do is resist, and the Holy Spirit will give us the victory. No question, no question. So, another deception that's related to that one is that if we're strong in the Lord, we don't need to ask anybody for help. That is weak to ask for help. 
<laughs> that is a lie from the pits of hell. I'm sorry, it really is. The enemy would like to isolate us and cause division of the body of Christ so he can destroy us one by one. But if we hang together, if we help each other and love each other, we can be strong, okay? But really, we need each other because we all have different gifts and abilities and strengths. We have, we have different resources that God has allowed us to have. And we stand together and we fall if we're separated, really. So, yes, I think it's very important, even for really incredible prayer warriors, to ask for help when they feel that they need it. And just be honest about it, you know. I do. I mean, I'm not such an incredible person, but I do ask for help from time to time because I need it, you know, from time to time, I do. I'm not saying it's all the time, but I need help from God all the time. <laughs> I do, I ask Jesus for help all the time. I try to pray without ceasing and just abide in him and let him reign in me. So we must not allow the enemy to isolate us and convince us that we're too good to ask for help. That's ridiculous. I mean, Jesus even asked for help when he was, he was in the garden, and he received help from angels. So are we better than he is? <laughs> Not hardly, okay? So, um, yes, we're strong and working together, and that is God's design for victory. He made the body of Christ to work together for victory. So, another deception is that it's okay to just go to church on Sunday and and not really pay too much attention to religion during the week. That is being lukewarm. And lukewarm is not okay at all. Relationship with God is intentional, and obedience is required. If we're going to have a relationship with God, we have to go after that relationship because there's a lot trying to stop us. Okay, we got the whole world, we got all the fear in the media, we've got all kinds of people being afraid all around us. And, you know, it doesn't have to get to us. But um, we have to be really intentional about it, okay? If we're going to have a relationship with God and stand in faith and trust God all the time, we'll have to watch what we listen to and what we look at, who we talk to and what we say, and be sure to listen to the Holy Spirit of God and follow him. So I believe we're in the middle of the great falling away. Many hearts are growing cold. So in Revelation 3:16. Jesus said, So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So, if we don't guard our hearts, we can become lukewarm really fast. Because there's a lot of fear and, and coldness in our culture. Okay? So we've got to be careful and be on fire with passion for the Lord. That does not happen by accident. Now, feelings is another deception. The enemy of, often uses, that's number six, bodily and emotional feelings to work against what God is doing, okay? Um, I can think of a time when, you know, I just felt too tired to go to church. I really did. I thought I was just going to pass out. I was like, wow, you know? Um, I thought, well, I can't possibly drive. And then, you know what? I thought, that's just a feeling, so I prayed about it. And I said, God, do you want me to go to church or do you want me to stay home and sleep? And I really prayed until I knew that the Holy Spirit was letting me know what he wanted. And you know what? That tiredness was a deception and the enemy was trying to keep me out of church. So I overcame in prayer and the blood of the lamb and I drove to church without a problem and I was praising God and I had a good evening in church and it was a victory, you know? So... Even physical feelings, the enemy will try to use against what God is going to do in our lives. Okay, and we have to resist it. So, feelings include nausea and anxiety, um, anger, fear, lust, greed, jealousy, pride, self-righteousness, desire for revenge, tiredness and pain. We must not believe these things over the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is always true. Okay? And... We cannot be going by our feelings and really be strong in Christ because the feelings will lead us to defeat. Okay, I'm telling you. You hear people say, follow your heart. Well, that's what Hollywood says. But basically, that's an evil message. Okay? What's that? 
Two minutes, oh no. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, we got to the second page, almost done. Um, the enemy will try to distort the character of God Almighty and Jesus Christ. The truth is that God is love and that he is holy and good. He does not afflict willingly. He cares for his people, especially widows and orphans. The enemy tries to make God appear harsh and uncaring. Jesus said that only God is good. He said, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. That's New Testament people. Jesus told us to keep the commandments if we want to enter into eternal life. He didn't, he didn't hem and haw about that. He's, so Jesus is to be loved and obeyed and reverenced. We must take the commandments seriously because there it is in scripture. So Jesus himself fell on his face before God in Matthew 6, 39. That was at the garden in Gethsemane. He fell a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Now, I really want you guys to read the rest of this, but I'm going to have to close. And so I want to say again that knowing the word of God is like bringing our sword into battle. The word of God is Jesus' offensive weapon and will protect us from deception. It's absolutely essential. We can have the word of God with us always in our hearts to protect us if we study and show ourselves approved. I study often and read, uh, habitually I read at least twice a day, and this is on purpose. <laughs> if I didn't do that on purpose, it wouldn't happen, okay? So, Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. So, that is how we can overcome, is by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So, God bless you. Thank you so much for listening. And Lord, I pray that you'll write your words in our hearts and that nothing will take them out, Lord God. Lord, help us to learn the Bible and walk in it. And Lord, help us to abide in you, Lord Jesus, that you will reign in your church on earth the way you intended. Lord, I pray that your church will stand up strong for you and give you glory. In Jesus' name, 